Hi, I'm Mick. Abby here from Cuyamaca Outdoor School. Today we will be doing some activities revolving around our eye care principles. I'm going to share a story told from two different perspectives. I'm going to be leading a communication activity. While I guide us through some thoughtful reflections. So let's get started. Hi everybody, it's Miss Katie from Cuyamaca Outdoor School. And one of my favorite activities that we get to do while you're at school here is story time. So it's at the end of the day, we get our pajamas on, we get our favorite blanket or pillow, maybe even a stuffed animal, and we come to the center room and the cabin leader is gonna share a story with you. Now today, I'm gonna share one of my favorite stories with you. It's called A Tale of Two Beasts. There's something interesting about how this story is set up, so I want you to pay attention to it. And also, there are some clues in here about eye care. Remember, integrity, cooperation, attitude, respect, and esteem. So while I'm reading and you're listening, I want you to take advantage of that and write down some notes or draw pictures of how these characters are using eye care or maybe how they're not using eye care. Could. Are you ready? Here we go. A Tale of Two Beasts by Fiona Robertson. Also, I should mention, this is published by Kane Miller. Hmm, I'm noticing two different sets of footprints in this book. A Tale of Two Beasts. This one is part one, The Strange Beast. And down here it says, for David, there are two sides to every story, and then there's the truth. I was walking home from Grandma's house through the deep, dark woods when I spied a strange little beast. He was stuck up a tree and whining sadly. There's the beast, and there is our main character. So I decided to rescue him. I will call you Fang, I told him, and I wrapped him warmly in my scarf and carried him safely home. I gave him a lovely bath and a gorgeous new hat and sweater in a delicious bowl of fresh nuts. I made him a beautiful house and gave him Lord Rex to play with. That must be Lord Rex right there. Look at the, look at him, the beast. Does he look very happy to you? I took him out for lots of walkies to keep him fit and healthy. Oh, he definitely does not look excited right there. And I showed him off to all my friends who loved him nearly as much as I did. So they're saying things like, oh, amazing, so cute, awesome. They seem to really like him. Do you think he likes that? <sighs> but for some strange reason, the little beast did not look very happy. Well, I think we already noticed that. In fact, he was looking rather hot. I hope he's not sick, I thought. I opened a window to cool him down. That's kind of nice. But then something terrible happened. He threw off his clothes, leapt out the window, and ran away as fast as he could back to the deep, dark woods. I wanted to go and look for him, but Mama had other plans. Dinner time, bath time, bedtime. Did she listen to her mom, though? I think she did. I couldn't sleep. I missed the little beast and wondered if I would ever see him again. But then 
a small furry shadow appeared at the foot of my bed. I think that would make me feel a little bit scared. I don't know about you. <gasps> the strange little beast had returned. He seemed quite pleased to see me, and I began to think that maybe, just maybe, he wasn't that strange after all. And look what they're doing. Frolicking in the deep, dark woods. You might think that's the end of the story, but wait, there's more. I wonder why the beast came back. Maybe this will tell us. A Tale of Two Beasts, Part Two. The Terrible Beast. Now the sign says, for David, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I was hanging from my favorite tree, singing happily to the birds when... Hey! I was ambushed by a terrible beast. What's going on here? She growled at me and tied me up and carried me off to her secret lair. She made me disgustingly clean and dressed me up in a ridiculous hat and sweater and tried to make me eat squirrel food. I guess this beast is not a squirrel. She kept me in a tiny box with nothing for me to do and nowhere for me to hang from. This little guy does not seem happy. She made me walk backwards and forwards and backwards again for no reason whatsoever. She showed me off to a herd of even wilder beasts who were just as terrible as she was. Look how angry he looks. I had had enough. I made a cunning plan and put it straight into action. And right here, it says A plus B equals freedom. Here's A and there's B. What do you think he's thinking about doing? Free once more! I raced back to the deep dark woods before the terrible beast could catch me. And he says, woohoo! It was peaceful in the deep dark woods. A bit too peaceful, perhaps, and also a bit wet. In weather like this, one could do with a nice warm hat. So I snuck back to retrieve it under the cover of darkness. The terrible beast was waiting for me. She seemed quite pleased to see me. And I began to think that maybe, just maybe, she wasn't that terrible after all. And they ended up doing the same thing. What did you notice that was interesting about that story? Yeah, it was told from two different points of view or two different perspectives. So I want you to think about that and have a good night.
Mick here from Cuyamaca Outdoor School. Now today you and your partner are going to work on a really fun activity together. Do you remember Katie's story from earlier? Well now it's your turn to create your own beast. Now the goal of this activity is to describe your beast as clearly as possible so that your partner can draw it as accurately as they can. Now remember, good communication means listening intently and expressing yourself clearly as well as honoring differences. Now Abby and I are going to demonstrate this activity for you and then it'll be your turn. This is the drawing of my beast and Abby has not seen it yet so we'll see how well I could describe it so that she could draw it as accurately as possible. You ready Abby? I'm ready. Okay so I'm gonna start with its head. It's pretty oval shaped because I'm not the best artist. So I draw, I draw lots of shapes. So the head is oval shaped and it has two real large ears, almost like an elephant's ears. All right. It also has a trunk like an elephant, if you could believe it. But it has the body of like a human. What about the mouth? So the, the mouth is hidden behind the trunk. And the head kind of just sits on top of the shoulders. There's no neck. But with the trunk, I did give a little detail. I gave little wrinkles going down the trunk. And the trunk is shaped almost like an S. And the hands? Again, I'm not the best artist, so the hands are... are the fingers are basically just smaller circles. There's four, fing there's four, four circles for the fingers and for each toe. Are they wearing any clothes? Yeah, he's, he's wearing shorts and, and a baseball hat. All right. What about the eyes of the creature? So the, the eyes are basically, they're shaped like D's, but one eye is, is facing the correct direction, and then the other eye, that D is, is facing backwards. Are there any other big details to your creature? I don't think so. Did you add pockets to the shorts? No, I didn't. The shorts do have pockets. Okay, I think I'm finished then. All right. Well, let's let's show the camera first. How did she do? How well did we do? Let's see, Abby. Oh, wow. Pretty That's so close. awesome. Now that was just a quick run through of the activity. You and your partner will have plenty of time to complete it. But now it's your turn. Your teacher will divide you up and they'll prompt you when it's time to switch and also when the time is up. If you do have extra time, you can use color to add even more detail. Now here are some discussion questions that your teacher might have you talk about, just like in the last video. Abby here from Cuyamaca Outdoor School. Do you remember that story, A Tale of Two Beasts, where one of the beasts felt comfortable and safe in the deep dark woods? 
Well, I want us to have the opportunity to find our own magic spot where we can feel comfortable and safe too. This opens up the space for journaling. Journaling allows you to have a conversation with yourself, figure out where you are mentally and physically. This self-awareness can help you with social situations later on. When it comes to finding a magic spot, here are a few helpful tips. You want it in a space where you don't normally go so that once you're there, people know not to bother or distract you. You also want it in a space that makes you feel comfortable and your true authentic self. If you have the opportunity to go outside, you should. Being outside helps reduce stress in the brain. This is known as nature therapy, and it doesn't take long for the positive effects of nature to truly kick in. If you don't have the opportunity to go outside, that's okay too. Just take a few thoughtful moments to think about your favorite outdoor space. My favorite outdoor space is out here on the trail. So come and join me for my favorite magic spot. Now that we've had a chance to find our magic spot, let's take some moments to be mindful. Being mindful means being aware of your thoughts and feelings and accepting them for the way that they are. Be present in your current moment. How are you sitting? Do you feel comfortable? And don't forget to breathe. Try exhaling for twice as long as you're inhaling for. This naturally slows the heart rate down and makes you feel more calm. Set a timer for 25 minutes and start writing down all the senses you're feeling. What do you smell? What do you hear? What do you see? Add pictures to really emphasize where you're at. Maybe turn the entire thing into a comic book. But most important, be kind to your wandering mind. Don't judge or obsess about thoughts that you get stuck in. If you are stuck in your writing, here are some questions to consider. After the timer has gone off, look over your work. Is there any extra details you would like to add before you're finished? Save your work and try to return to your magic spot, maybe at least once a week. After one month, compare your first entry to your last. Have you noticed any improvements with your journaling? Have you expressed any different or similar emotions in your writing? Any other patterns? Did you start fresh each time or continue from where you left off? Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you had fun. Excited to see you at Cuyamaca Outdoor School. Woo!